Good morning and welcome to Schools Not Out. This segment will be looking at lessons for Cape Caribbean studies. Our topic today is concepts, indicators and factors that promote development. I am Melissa Beckford Simpson and I will be your presenter for today. We will begin by looking at development and the various ways in which development can be defined. Now, there is no one way to define development. In fact, there are three different kinds of development that we look at as it relates to Caribbean countries. Now, remember, we are doing Caribbean studies. So, of course, it is all of the Caribbean countries and not just Jamaica. Sometimes you students tend not to remember that. So we begin, first of all, with economic development. Economic development is the traditional way in which development has been defined. And it usually focuses on economic growth. And then it moves on to looking at how this economic growth is supposed to trickle down to the rest of the society. As the economy grows, then it is expected that things like poverty, literacy rates, and so on will trend down in the country because people will have more money to spend. However, we have had some challenges with this kind of development in the Caribbean. For some reason, we, do not, we are not able to have this kind of development that we want. The trickle-down effect is somehow we are not getting it. So here are some indicators of development, some of, of economic development. We have gross domestic product, we have gross national product. These are just two and these are the two major ones. What is the difference between these two? Okay, the gross domestic product looks at the value, the total value of goods and services within the country. The gross national product also takes in goods and services that the country exports. So other revenues that come into the country from outside. So that's the difference between the gross domestic and the gross national product. There are other economic indicators such as population growth rate and age dependency ratios. These are all economic indicators of development. So economic development then is supposed to be looking at the economic growth of the country and how this is supposed to trickle down to the people and improve their standards of living. All right, so that is just one kind of development. Now we move on to human development. So human development takes a slightly different approach while using some of the same indicators. All right, so it looks at the quality of life of the individual first. And then this individual contributing positively to the society to then grow the economy. So it's more like a bottom-up approach. All right? So some of the indicators that we find for human development, because it's looking at people, it's looking at how people's lives are improved. We have life expectancy, literacy rates, birth, death rates, levels of income, of the people and income parity. It looks at access to education and medicine. These are basic human requirements, right? Access to education, access to healthcare, these are important for people to live. So if people are unable to have access to these things, then that means that human development is somewhat, you know, it's not happening. All right? So let us look at this quote. It says, Ensuring citizens have continued access to freedom is important for development. These freedoms include personal security, rule of law, freedom of expression, political participation, and equal opportunity. Therefore, to ensure development, the four pillars of the human development paradigm must be used. So it is really how involved people of a country are able to be in the affairs of their own country, right? So now we move on to the human development paradigm. 
it has four pillars equity productivity empowerment sustainability and each of the pillars are intertwined so we begin with equity equity is really how much everybody in the society has access to the same resources so it doesn't matter if you are from rural or urban if you are young or old if you are uptown or downtown it doesn't matter who you are or where you are it doesn't matter what religion what sex you are male or female everybody should have equal access to the resources of, of the country it does not mean that the government is going to come and hand out everything to everybody it simply means that i must be able to have access to education higher education just like anyone else and therefore i am then able to make something of myself as it were all right then we move on to productivity productivity really looks at um, levels of movement in the country in terms of the output of the country people feel productive when there's equal access empowerment how do I feel do I feel good about living in this country do I feel good as an individual sustainable sustainability how are we able to maintain these gains over time not just for the present generation but for generations to come that is what it's really looking at so all of the pillars are intertwined if you look at it all right so we'll move on to now another kind of development sustainable development this really looks at development not just for the present but for the future we said that also under the human development paradigm what are some of the indicators of sustainable development environmentally friendly agricultural practices levels of deforestation and reforestation renewable energy generation so we're thinking of things that have to do with preserving the environment and ensuring that something is left for the future all right so there are what we call SDGs or Sustainable Development Goals. There are 17 of them. However, just a few are named, are named here. Number one, no poverty. Two, zero hunger. Three, good health and well-being. Four, quality education. Five, gender equality. And six, clean water and sanitation. Some of them may seem to be like zero hunger seems to be a little bit much but these are goals these are where we want to be all right now jamaica's vision 2030 is coined from the sdgs so everybody is supposed to be able to say this with me jamaica the place of choice to live work raise families and do business that's jamaica's vision 2030 and it is coined from these same sdgs because we want our country to be able to give access to everyone and other caribbean countries also have similar vision related to 2030 or otherwise all right so what are some of the indicators of development as a whole right we apart from gdp and gnp and you know levels of education and so on there's one particular one that we need to focus on and that is the gini coefficient what is this? The Gini coefficient is really a ratio that measures how, how equal the society is. So you have, it it's ranges from 0 to 100, with 0 being perfect equality and 100 being perfect inequality. So of course, the closer a country is to 100, then that means that there is um, a problem with equality in that country. It, asks the question how many persons within a particular society are able to access and afford the resources to live a comfortable life how many persons all right so how how is the caribbean classified in light of all of these definitions of development how is the caribbean classified where do we fall Caribbean countries are largely considered to be developing as against developed 
And there are other terminology too that are used such as South as against North, Third World as against First World. And notice that there is always a gap right in the middle there. So why are we classified this way? The answer is simple. And most of the questions that we ask in terms of where we are as Caribbean countries stem from our history. Okay, so in short, how did we come to be like this? You will recall that Caribbean countries were or are former colonies of what we call mother countries who are also known as the metropole going forward. So we, we always had a history of dependency on the metropole. So we were largely producers of goods to send to the metropole. And usually it, is all, it, is, it was usually always primary, primary resources, primary goods that we send. All right. So the concept of development itself, though, came out of World War II and the need for countries to arrive at a kind of idea as to how we go about accessing this idea called development. All right. So we have over time developed different stages and we are in a stage now that we call developing. So what are some other non-traditional indicators that are here? Internet penetration, good governance, the use of modern technology, sustainability. These are non-traditional traditional, as against GDP and GNP that were always the traditional indicators. This is important for Caribbean countries because we do not develop the same way. We have different economies and we have a different kind of situation in the Caribbean. So we need to look at that all right so when we come back from the break we are going to go a little bit into the challenges that caribbean countries face stay tuned schools not out <laughs> 